Hi. Uh, this is more Bard's Tale 3. Um, this is Jay Rodman. I've just finished, uh, doing some inventory, uh, pruning and refilling my spell points. Didn't do much else besides that between sessions. And I'm gonna head back down into Unterbrae. Again, I may finish mapping the second level, but main goal is um, experience points at this point. I think that will change uh, once we finish the Scarabri portion of the game. But that's where I am for now. Huh. Song ended just as I went to load the dungeon. I'm not going to bother to update this map for the travel through. Well, maybe I, I guess I lied. Depending upon how many times I end up in fights. So, um, I'm not sure, but I may have gained an extra attack since my last outing. I should pay more attention. I guess we're hitting three times now, and around level four or five, we went to two times, and around level eight, nine, we went to three times. So. No, we haven't gotten our next extra attack yet. Soon then.
I am really liking getting 2,500 experience points per fight. If we could uh, keep that up, everyone, that'd be great. Why does Lady Oak Shield do such pitiful damage? It's just like 10? That is terrible. I think she has a specialized weapon too. I guess the Pure Blade might be something to use instead of to hit with. What is your weapon? Oh, Halberd. I thought you had a per Pure Blade. Let's try this instrument out. See if it's a fire horn, which is what I think it is. Looks like it. I breathed and it was a group damage attack. I'm disappointed at how many enemies are resisting the fire horn though I mean I guess the amount of damage is going to be irrelevant soon enough So, uh, I think this run, I'm going to head over this way and try to explore this space. Be right back. So, I don't remember... I can figure it out. I thought there was something special about these squares that I missed. Or I guess it's just, um, well, we'll see.
Yep, there it is. This is a magic drain square. So the choice I'm going to be making soon is um, whether to um, whether or not to make my spellcasters into sorcerers. The main reason to make them into sorcerers is that it advances um, the power of my party. I move from having conjurer and magician spells only to having access to sorcerer spells as well. Uh, and some of them are the more powerful attack spells. Oh, I just found a day blade. Oh, I thought I had one of those before. And I was wrong. Now I have it. Okay, equip that crap. It's not really crap. The halberd is going away. This is a damage upgrade. Uh, also, it can produce magical light spells. It's not really the main attraction, though. The main attraction is increased damage output. Didn't get a chance to see it. I don't think it's going to be spectacular. I think it's a small improvement over Halberd, but uh, with lower variability. So lo higher lows and lower highs. More stable. Yep, there's 43 damage. Whereas b before she was doing values like 10, 20. I think those were unlucky. But 43 is higher than she had been doing. <laughs> Harmonic gems uh, dropping like crazy now. Yeah, so the only way to get from these stairs um, out into the wider dungeon without losing spell points is this weird path, this zigzag path. Uh, even this goes through a trap. Um, obviously, you have to recast Bard Song or recast Light or just lose spell points if you go the other ways. Other people may not feel that that's the most important thing, which is fine.
But I feel like spell points are my limiting resource at this point in the game. Although this rate of uh, production of uh, harmonic gems is quite undercutting my point. I'm trading the harmonic gems off to my mages who can use them. And then this is going off to Elena the Rogue. Try to identify it. It's probably going to be another harmonic gem. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, um... So... To south... I saw some numbers move on my party, but I think their hit points and spell points are where they were. Blood Acolyte, I am going to run away from, although uh, I accidentally went into the storage room at the front of Scarabray and found that um, a youth potion? picked it up so I actually probably shouldn't be quite as far as scared of being aged anymore because I mean I haven't tried it but what else would a youth potion do I guess they could be sadistic in the sort of roguelike or wizardy tradition and make it take away your experience points but I don't think that's what's gonna happen I think it's just a curing item for that of course, let's see if I can remember to use it, because I've never used it before. Wait, am I always counting the distances? There's this thing where I like tried to move forward and it flashed, but I guess I didn't move. judging the distances. Okay. Or I am judging the distances, rather.
that from the south, I, I wonder if these are one-way walls, because I thought I saw through this to the south. From the south, rather. Or maybe I just misunderstood what I was seeing. But this is certainly what's there now from this side. I went like this. I wanted to check this wall. Not because it's important, because I mean, I don't know. If it's a, if it's a one-way wall or it's a one-way door, then I can get there any number of other ways. I guess I'm just being completest. Yep, well from this side too. So at this point, all we have left to explore is beyond, beyond the one-way invisible wall. And I'm assuming this goes through. We went through here. And I'm assuming that because of the way it appeared on the auto map. Which is hard to judge now. But indeed we went through, and indeed we can't go back. So, updating my position. Over here. And then I tried to go back and could not, so. It's so disorienting when you end up having to navigate a space without anything showing. It's a matter of darkness, it sort of feels right. It's supposed to be dark, but when it's not supposed to be dark and I still can't see anything, it feels a little bewildering. Incidentally, when monks go up, um, they end up doing more and more damage per hit. Go up in level. Not every single level, but there are, I think it's like every other level they get damage improvements. Um, or maybe it's just stair-stepped with uh, their attack increases, so it's like every four, but staggered. In any event, without Equipment improvements, monks keep doing more and more damage. So there's a node on this square. Something like down below is do the first right thing to do. Because I'm going to be honest with you, uh, that clue never made any sense to me. Although a hint book or something sort of told me what they were trying to say. So someone got a mithril helm. Probably Griselda, I thought it was... Yeah. And I'm gonna hand... Oh, I tried to use it, right? 
knock it if I can. Okay, she's down to minus ten. Incidentally, uh, I don't know how you would necessarily know. But the Dayblade produces the same effect as Lesser Revelation. Lasts the same amount of time. Illuminates the same distance, three in front of us. And I prefer it because it costs zero spell points. Over time, his spell points become more plentiful. I stop being as interested in the um, items that take the place of spells because spells take up no inventory space. Um, it's very easy to remember who can cast the spells because eventually you get to a point where <coughs> your archmages can all cast any spells. Uh, little hit point drain dead end and the question of course is is there anything at the end of it worth it but I have no idea well at least this uh, end square doesn't drain my hit points but doesn't seem to do anything good either is the one above. I'm not going to fight a blood alkylate when I have no need to. Because I have that use potion to cure aging doesn't mean I want to use it up quickly. It's got 10 charges, I think. Okay, that looks right, and if I try to go forward, nothing happens. If I try to go west, also, I don't go anywhere. So the auto map kind of gave this away ahead of time by showing me there should be an invisible wall there. But now I've experimentally confirmed it. Oh, what's this? Something like 
like that. I mean, oh, and look at look at this. Uh, you see how this wall in the center is double thickness, and these are single thickness. I could be wrong, but it makes me think that they are one-way walls. Okay. And I definitely move forward, because something changed, and what changed was all my spells got turned off. I am not a fan of that, especially... Especially losing my compass. Let's try here. I have a feeling it's also gonna be. Yep. see that, so I think that's what I'm seeing. Um, now I can see this walls behind it, which I don't want to be this color. They're not supposed to be invisible. Cross my fingers. Oh, you failed. I feel like that should work more often. It might be okay if it eventually becomes mostly successful, but I kind of want it to work more often now because it feels questionable why I have a rogue at all sometimes. So I just tried going north and then north again, neither of which worked. Step here. I'm going to. Oh, I'm not going to step there. There's going to be another invisible wall, is what's going to actually happen. Still don't understand how the auto map can see the invisible walls for me. Sort of, I don't know, disbelief breaking. So a lot of this style of game goes on inside your head. Um, makes it a little tricky to figure out how to present it well. Like, there are questions that I was um, considering, like, um, is this going to be connected to here? Uh, Will I have another way to find walls in the future? Will Automap always be this powerful? 
I don't know. There are other things like, um... How many, you know, when, when... When am I gonna level up? What is my current progress? How do I want to change the party? Evaluating risk? I don't know. It, I'm trying to... When is it time to turn back? So, sadly... One-way door icon. We have no one-way door icon for the boxy door. There is an invisible wall here, though. And here. So the remaining portion of the dungeon is through the anti-magic. It's like three walls from this side, but it's a door from this side. I think it's even more special than that, but I don't think we can tell yet. So we also could see through this um, this segment, and I suppose there could be the idea of a wall that is invisible in one direction and visible in another direction. I think it's just a one-way wall. which gives us a way back. Huh, I think I made a mistake in transcribing this before. I think it's not here. And I'm facing south. I should be able to go one. Oh. It's a spinner. Yeah. Let me bring back my compass. I think I went here and then here. There's no landmarks to the east, only only north really. So I went one south, and now I can't see anything because my light went out. Okay. So 
So this is stable and doesn't seem to be a spinner. If I go one east and turn north, okay, this goes where I thought it should. If I go one south, it doesn't cancel my spells and doesn't spin me. West. Let's look at auto map. Okay, auto map gives us a big hint. You have lines here and here, so I think there are invisible walls, although not right in front of me. I'm going to go check out the invisible walls. But first, I'm going to kill these people. These monsters. They're not people. We would never kill people unless they were, unless they had loot. Or they were evil. You know, if someone told us that they were evil, then we would kill them. Because we're moral, upstanding people. And half orcs and, um, Hobbits. I feel like I should be dispelling these wind warriors for free. I'm just used to being over leveled versus illusionary enemies. It sort of feels wrong that I it's not um a cheesy cakewalk. I'm grateful that these Zephyr Mages are walking towards me instead of casting spells. Oh look, a disbelief! Finally! So sure enough, trying to move through here doesn't work. Nor does here. Here does. Can we go south? So I went over here and stepped in, and we 
we get uh, a puzzle. I don't know how to mark these as distinct from messages, so I guess I just won't. A faded figure appears and asks, I am nothing, I make nothing but my opposite creates me even as it destroys me what am i well we, this is we're almost on the level and we have this puzzle about opposites creating and destroying and the only other thing that seemed puzzly relevant on this uh, level was this about light hurts me and bleeds me but leaves me behind it always so we've got light hurting and leaving behind and opposite and being created so I'm pretty sure this is shadow because light creates shadow leaves behind I don't know about the hurt and bleed that's a little figurative but I'm gonna try shadow and now there's a door in front of me now did I get teleported or not we can check uh, no, this one-way door became a two-way door. I have no idea how to record that on a map. I'm not going to even bother. I'm going to try to remember it. I'm trying the uh, invisible walls from the other side. And... Oh, let's try south, too. Sure enough act like walls in all respects. Uh, going south doesn't work. So that's a wall to the south too. And now we got a message that I don't like. Because it says, return from beyond this place is not possible by this means. My interpretation of that message is, you have to have your own way of getting out. Which to me says, you better be level 13. So, I will listen to this advice and head on out. Is this, is this an anti-magic zone? Yeah, it is. Uh, one south. That is two. Uh, where am I? Okay, I'm where I thought I was. And one south of that. anti-magic zones. But I definitely was getting fizzled.
I don't know if there's like some kind of lesser form of anti-magic where the spell might keep working but not be triggerable. Okay, I, I think that the Smithril Shield is an upgrade, so I'm going to focus on that for a second. Okay, this unidentified shield may be a Mithril Shield. I think it's a Tower Shield. Paladin has a Mithril Shield. Who cares if the monk has his armor class minus 20? My bard is, meanwhile, has a buckler. Buckler can go away. We'll use this item, assuming it's a harmonic gem. If it's something else, well, I guess we'll find out. Nope. I'm on a gem. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely any magic. I don't know why it turns off my light, but later. It feels like a bug. explored this level. Although, interestingly, I just found a trap that I'd never found before. Or maybe I didn't notice the last time I set it off. go through this area in the hopes of triggering, triggering some more fights. It seems like that worked. So the thing that tells me that I could never, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to come back the way I went in. Uh, maybe there's a, gonna be a way out that's not a matter of teleporting out. But I'm suspicious it's gonna be if you go down here, you have to beat the boss. Or it might just be as simple as if you go down here, you have to solve a puzzle to get out. But it's gonna be a next level to the next level of monsters and I could easily end up in a bad state and if I can't leave that could be disasters so my reaction is 
I need level 13 with teleport. clear whether going to um, locations that usually have encounters will all a second time will be as likely to encounter them as the first time. also fight on fight in the same zone. I should not have fought. Because it's the blood alcohol light I don't like dealing with. Okay, if he's going to push me away, I'm just going to, I don't know, I, f I feel invested now. I'm going to try to send my rogue over to kill him. Actually, yes, that's what I'm going to do. If he misses once, screw it, I'm out. And this is, in fact, the the sort of uh, action you can do with a rogue that is why you need the rogue. Imagine this is a mega powerful boss who doesn't let us get anywhere near it, and our spells can't reach it. You can sneak your rogue all the way over and have your rogue attack them and miss. So I'm going to just run away. But at a higher level, it's a different story. I didn't bother to turn the light back on. I was went over here. Everyone's attacking the first the fast. I need to remember to drink my booze. In fact, I can do that in combat. I should have just done it just then. Hmm. 
He said, I have a poison needle, and I'm not poisoned. Maybe I've just poisoned myself so much. It doesn't work anymore. I still have not reboozed on my bard. Well, I don't have a convenient uh, wineskin to do it from, so. So I don't think I'm anywhere close to the 40 slash to 50,000 I need to level up the mages. in this particular segment uh, was what I just did was I went up the stairs and I came back down them again. And that should make all of the encounter squares alive again. kind of um, silly. Now that I'm hunting experience points, uh, they're giving me one of everything.
Although, okay, I'm gonna go to the corner. Uh, incidentally, I am here. No, here is where I am about now. Uh, zooming out because the detail doesn't matter so much anymore. I'm gonna go to this corner, come back through, and then leave. I thought there was a fight in the corner. Okay. Oh, here it is. Uh, uh, one wing slasher. So for getting items, these fights are ideal because they're quick, they're over. You may well get an item after each one of them. You might, you know, you might not, or you might get something you don't want, like a Finn's Flute. But uh, having lots of quick fights should increase the rate at which you acquire items. Okay, here's a actual sizable group of enemies, and the Zephyrmages are likely to summon a lot of enemies. I'm not super excited about a long fight with them, but I'll take what I can get. Basically, I'm at low, relatively low resources, and a long, difficult fight isn't what I was looking for. They have taken uh, a lot of damage, and they're down to one of them, and that's this fight is fine now. Even with them casting spells like the bat. Well, actually, if he does that every turn, and it's doing 30 damage-ish every turn, that's actually quite bad. But, um, presumably, he will randomly choose to do other things. 
and my aggregate healing will be stronger than his damage. Especially on the round where we kill him. Okay, I'm gonna leave the dungeon as fast as I can, and I'm not gonna bother to update the map about it. Running from those didn't work, so I guess we'll kill them instead. This square is definitely a fixed fight. I think I've had a fight every single time I've stepped on it. There's a funny thing that happens um, if I step on an encounter square and try to turn light, turn right. I'm using the IJKL movement scheme, and turn right is L. Uh, so sometimes if it says, you know, do you want this thing to join your party? I've already pressed L, which means leave it in peace. So it loads it and then unloads it before I even realize it's happening. Let's roll plate I don't need. Can't use any more of that. You know, I should really use the safety song when I'm trying to leave. Which is supposed to stop encounters from happening entirely. At least I mean, probably not the, you know, fixed encounters. I just attacked instead of running away. That was a mistake. Although at this point, I'm running away from, I'd be running away from a fair amount of experience points, so I kind of don't want to anymore. Although Lady Oak Shield is in very bad shape. You know, I'm going to have her defend, because that's what I should do. It's hard to remember that's a real option. Um, oh well, she died from a spell. That is unfortunate. I think I should run, actually run away. Okay, but I can't. Use, uh, 
Instrument number 32 on Zephyr Mages. Hide. Use a harmonic gem. Defend. Attack the mage. You can attack the warrior. You should attack your own warrior. Uh, what do I have? Do I have stone touch? No. I don't have death strike either, do I? No. Um, I don't know what to do with you then. I guess I should cast flesh anew. Well, that was not the best fight in the adventure. I think resurrect first, then level up. So supposedly with this particular song playing, things should not attack me. At least most things. Okay, for level ups, what do we get? I think the fighters will level up and the out exotics will not. Warrior gets a point of luck. Paladin at the bottom <coughs> gets dexterity, which is actually nice. My monk is over 1,700 short. That is much closer than I expected. Um, the bard gets dexterity. Elena, the rogue, gets dexterity. Okay, new order. One, seven, two, three, four, five. Okay. Given that I only have 1,700 left, I'm going to do that this segment. First, the slow healing.
in Bar's Tale 1, when you're trying to get started, money is so tight, because uh, you keep getting nearly killed, um, and you have to keep paying, and you have no way to heal yourself. You have no healing spells at all until you reach level 3 to get the second level of spells. So I found myself calculating everything in terms of money. So I would have, so I'd be gaining money. So, you know, uh, when I got in trouble, I'd be able to get pay for heals. Um, and I would say, okay, a beer is four gold and uh, it gives me two healing songs and those give me around 12 points of healing and that's worth 120 gold so that's a big win and etc. Um, and then when I would finish my a fight I would look at how many hit points I had lost and how much gold I had gotten and was it a net positive and by how much the more a fight seemed like it was a net positive the more I'd be willing to do it and if something was close I would avoid those fights in the future I don't know that kind of thinking gets you to level 2 in that game <laughs> no Okay, near 1,700 experience points. There should be a, a counter here. Three Zephy Mages, that might take me over it all on its own. Do we have anti magic on these? No, the other guy has anti magic. Uh, Shock Sphere. Anti magic? Yeah, you're useless. We're gonna get killed trying to get this uh Yeah, we just got I just got killed. That's awesome. That was really bad luck. <laughs> okay. Speaking of money, I may run out of it soon. All these deaths, and about to hit level 13, and reclassing to other classes, which will go up levels fast, which means I will need. So I have 200,000 gold, that's actually a lot. That is not what I wanted to see. Maybe I shouldn't run away from these things. I mean, I only need 1,700 experience points. You give a couple hundred each. going to try um, the easy dungeon the catacombs for a bit
because I don't want to do that again. <laughs> I'm gonna kick some easy monster butt. Collect some experience. It's funny, some of them are not dying to my like 60 damage. Maybe the discrepancy between strength and the two dungeons isn't as big as I thought. There's a thousand experience. I need. <gasps> it's a bard sword. Okay, okay. This is one of the upgrades I have been very eagerly waiting for. Trade that to my bard. Okay, for reasons I do not understand. Equip. I'm never. This war axe again. Okay, and I don't I don't need this thing anymore. Okay. So when you have a bard sword equipped, you never ever run out of bard songs. There's a, an instrument that does the same thing, I can't remember which one. But um so that effectively means I can use a bard song every round without any concerns. And save the game because I do not want to find something bad happens. And I have to wait for a bard sword again. Okay. So that means things like, um, instead of those combat rounds where she attacks because she hasn't got anything better to do, I can play a song because I haven't got anything better to do. And the songs do things like, as you've been seeing, healing which is nice. Or I could do, for example, a Rhyme of Duo Time, which, well, wait, Defend, Event, Defend, uh, will increase the number of attacks my party members get. Which effectively increases their damage. Or I could do, for example, Sanctuary Score. And bring down the armor class of my party. And just keep on doing that throughout the combat, which means basically the contribution of the bard goes up over the duration of a combat with no attrition costs. That was sort of true before. It was, um, you know, I could buy a bunch of booze and bring it along. But it, as you might have noticed, it was running out eventually. I could have tried using inven more inventory slots of other party members, for example. Or maybe gotten really abusive with, um, rolling up new bards, who I think come with a large flask. But this changes it from I can use my bard abilities all the time in a fairly long adventure, like mapping a whole level, to an arbitrarily long time, like 
exploring an entire dungeon from start to finish, multiple dungeons, um, whatever. Or it can be in a situation like this where um, I'm not sure how long this fight will take to end. I don't care. I can just you know, it's, so long as that enemy is still summoning new things, that's fine. I can keep stacking up my bard song stronger and stronger the entire time. It's too bad there's no spell resistance song because that's I would stack that crap up like crazy. Marsdale 2, for example. Or maybe there is one and I haven't learned it yet. It's possible to learn more songs later. I don't... Uh, I don't remember exactly which two you get. Okay, I think we're still at around 1,400 experience. And we need around 1,700, so it'd be 300 more to go. Maybe this will get us there. Okay. No, I, I don't really need to fight things anymore, Gord rulers. You can you can leave me alone. Now to level up the, la the last three members of my party. Monk, you took strength. That's kind of good. You can see it. Everyone needs four hundred thousand for the next level. Uh, Elendor took Constitution. That's auspicious. And Constitution for Griselda. Okay, uh, next step is spell acquiring. And I managed to afford level 7 spells. Okay, before we move on, uh, let's check out the spells I just got. So down at the bottom of this list, we already had YM phase door and YMCA. We got those two levels ago. At the top of the last level, level seven, we get seven four four new spells rather. Uh, they're kind of strong ones. Um, this is restoration, which heals all hit point damage of all members in the party all at once. I think it costs twenty five spell points or something. Uh, it also cures poison on anyone. It also cures insanity on anyone. It's sort of like 
flesh renew on everyone, but also making their hit points at maximum. This is, becomes the standard healing spell for any significant cross-party damage the remainder of the game. Here we have Death Strike. Um, I can't remember its range. It may only be 10 feet. It may be 20 feet. It's not. It's very short. But it's fairly likely to kill one opponent. So uh, if something's close and you want to get rid of it, this pretty much will kill it. So far we haven't seen that many enemies um, that have that many hit points, so like a strong damage spell seems like it might kill them, but we have seen sometimes it took three, two or three people to attack something to kill it off. Uh, this typically will be one person to kill it off, but later there will be things that are thousands of hit points and killing them off without instant death is not realistic. Uh, this is Ice Storm. This is a group damage spell that goes kind of far, I think 50 feet, and does like 3 to third, th what, three to 300 damage or something like that. It's a high damage, high spell points group attack. And then we have Stone to Flesh. If someone gets turned into stone, we can fix it. So far we haven't seen anyone get turned to stone. It's sort of not different from dying in that for our current abilities, you would have to haul them back to the temple and pay a large fee. Um, although, right now we have the ability to cure stone form and not the ability to resurrect. We'll get both later. Okay. Uh, which, I think that was Griselda, my magician. Yeah, yeah restoration is a magician spell. For my Conjurer, her last four spells are Regeneration. This is a single person. Heal all spell point damage spell. I think it's cure some statuses, but I don't have them memorized. Uh, it's obviously cheaper than Restoration. If one person is very low and you want to heal them fully, Regeneration can do the job. I'm going to skip that one for a moment. Far Foe makes one group of enemies much further away from you. Uh, this is really handy for people who can do mean attacks up close and cannot do them from far away, like dragons. If you move them to 30 feet or further, they can't breathe on you. Um, that's an example. There are other scenarios. This is not very exciting. This is the instant slayer. It summons an instant slayer to be in your party. I have no room for it, so I won't use it. And lastly, the ever so essential Apor Ap Aport Arcane. Uh, I don't know. I've like a port is not really a word that's in my vocabulary, so I'm not really sure how the spell ended up with that name. Uh, maybe Tela or T P R T was not as exciting, or maybe it was too confusing with another spell code. Whatever, Brian Cranford. That's what he do chose. This lets you teleport. Anywhere by coordinates. You can see, like, go two down, two west, two north, and you'll teleport there unless that area has teleport shielding, which is really common, actually. Uh, typically, the first level of a dungeon doesn't have teleport shielding, and then often deeper levels will. So you can't teleport directly to the boss. You have to kind of, like, work through the puzzle to get there. Um, but the first level is pretty much always teleport allowed, and you can pretty much always teleport back to the entrance to the dungeon. So this allows you to get out quickly, so long as you have a reasonable map, or so long as you just cast Grisewaite first, which tells you exactly how far you are from the entrance in all dimensions. So you can just reverse the numbers and teleport out. Okay, so that's that's our leveling up. Um, at this point, there are two obvious things you might want to do with your casters. Um, they both were in these sort of starter classes of Conjurer and Magician. These are the ones with, the, in some ways, the weakest spells, but definitely the fastest leveling classes. Uh, having mastered one um, class already, they're allowed to go to Sorcerer. So we could send them on to Sorcerer, which has kind of more damage stuff. Or they can go to the other starter class. 
uh, like the sorcerer can become a magician and the magician can become a sorcerer. Uh, the advantage of the second one is you'll get those levels pretty fast. Um, and that will give you a lot of spell points and a lot of hit points pretty fast. And that's what I'm going to do this time. The downside is it means there's longer before I have sorcerer spells. It means I'll be grinding longer. Sorry. I will mark the next few sessions clearly and people who don't want to see me grinding away can skip. So here's what class changing looks like. I pick seven and I can choose Sorcerer or Conjurer. I'm picking Conjurer 2. That is it. That's the whole thing. You can fumble finger this and and get something you totally don't want. Uh, be very careful. Okay, so that's... Um, oh, and... Uh, of course, that means... Oh, crap. I was trying to show their inventory. Of course, that means they're level one now. Uh, which is kind of bad because their saving throws are level one saving throws. And their ability to defeat the um, defenses, the magical resistance of enemies is from level one again. But, uh, so here we have, where's it marked? Uh, level one. It's hard to see because it's level one. Um, but I'll get the experience fast and they'll go up again fast and that won't be so a big deal. Okay, I'm going to stop this for now. See you next time, perhaps.